When the South Fork Bridge partially collapsed in 1940, it was very bad news. It happened in the town of Goldbridge, British Columbia, in Canada. The bridge was a lifeline for mining in the area, and at that time, it was Goldbridge's main industry. By 1941, the bridge had been rebuilt, and it was a cause of major celebration. The whole town, it seemed, turned out for the festivities. The population of Goldbridge in Canada, even to this day, only numbers 43 people. Only five children attend the local school. The reopening of the bridge that day in 1941 must have come as something of a relief. Finally, something to do and see. Several photographs were taken on the day and they were only released to the public in 2005 by the Braylawn Pioneer Museum. The photographic collection was entitled Their Past Lives Here. One of those photographs was this one. accepted to be a complete and unaltered photograph. No one has ever suggested any fakery here. It is rather stunning, for amongst the trilby hats, suit jackets, nerdy glasses and unmistakable 1940s attire is a man who wouldn't look out of place strolling down the streets of London or New York in 2023. With his modern haircut, wraparound sunglasses, printed modern t-shirt, trendy cardigan and compact camera, it's hardly surprising that the internet blew up in 2011 when the story of the time-travelling hipster suddenly broke. It had been online largely unnoticed for the previous six years. It had been shared on a blog and then picked up by dig.com and before long it it was big news in online articles and newspapers around the world. It was a viral sensation and still the subject of fierce debate. With the look so out of place, the internet came to one conclusion. He's a time traveller, inadvertently caught on camera. A time traveller from the future. Even to this day, there's discussion about this photograph. So much so that in the intervening 12 years since this photograph blew up, other seemingly convincing time travel images have been unearthed. We'll come back to this photograph and other Others very shortly. Because time travel, we're told, is theoretically possible. We know that we can travel forward in time because we do that every day. We also know that we can speed that up a little bit by getting into a high-speed rocket. The maths have been done. It's thanks to Einstein that we know that the faster we travel, the slower time passes in relation to us elsewhere. I'm 53 now. Never! No, no way! way. You use moisturiser! I'm 53 now. If I were to get into a spaceship for five years, travelling at 99% the speed of light, I'd come back to Earth in the year 2059, aged just 58. My birth certificate will still read 1970 in 2059, but only five years will have passed for me, whilst 36 years will have passed for you, Earth-bound mortals. Had Einstein been bundled onto a spaceship capable of travelling at those speeds at birth in 1879, he'd stagger off the craft in 2023, aged just 17. This is not science fiction. Einstein's general theory of relativity also suggests that we can travel back in time, if we could find a way of warping space-time. But that's where we always seem to hit a snag. Can we ever find a physical and realistic way to do it? We need to bend time and space and create a wormhole, one that will stay open long enough to allow us to cross through it. The tantalising thing about this is that it is supported by scientific fact. This is not beyond the realm of possibilities. It's not science fiction. We just don't know how to do it yet. But what if people in the future have already cracked the problem? Maybe we don't need to worry about creating a time machine from our current space-time coordinates. Let future generations invent it, and then we can take a look at it when they come and visit. The brilliant physicist Stephen Hawking could never rule out backwards time travel. Einstein, after all, did allow for it. So being the thinker that he was, back in 2009, he designed a simple experiment. He decided to throw a champagne reception pot Party for future time travellers. He really did it, and he really showed up for the party. But here's the twist. He didn't tell anybody about the party until after it had happened. Once it had happened, he printed invites showing the exact time and space coordinates of the party, in the hope that copies of it, in one form or another, would survive for thousands of years. He was hoping that one day someone in the future would find this invite and use a wormhole time machine to visit the party. Sadly, no one showed up. The party was a flop. It was just Stephen sat there. Can you imagine if time travellers had shown up? I would have loved to see the look on his face. So where are the time travellers? Does the lack of them show 
that it's never going to be possible. No one knows. But what if time travellers have already visited? What if they've been hiding in plain sight for many, many years? It could be that time travellers from the future just weren't interested in Hawkins' party. Maybe they don't want to reveal themselves out of worry for upsetting future events. You've seen Back to the Future. You know that's a key worry of any time traveller. I've had a look at the evidence which has been uncovered for this photograph. Some of the claims can be debunked, but not all of them. My first problem with it is the crowd. Not a single person seems to be in the slightest bit perturbed by the presence of this guy. Shouldn't they be staring and pointing at him? This makes me feel that they didn't view him as anything out of the ordinary. And if he was trying to conceal his time travelling adventures, surely the first thing to do would be to rush out and buy a trilby, horn rim glasses and an overcoat. He seems to care not a jot. Many point to the small camera he's holding as proof of time travel, saying that cameras of that type were not available in 1941. But they certainly weren't common, but they were available. The Kodak 35 was launched in 1938, and it was the first 35mm camera to be produced by the Eastman Kodak Company. It's hard to see exactly what type of camera this man is holding. It could easily be a Kodak 35. But to say this type of compact camera was unavailable in 1941 is wrong. We had the Kodak 35. The top the man is wearing does look several decades out of date and out of place. Printed t-shirts weren't a thing until the 60s. But researchers have pointed out that the M on the man's top bears an uncanny resemblance to the M of the Montreal Maroons, a short-lived ice hockey team which competed in the Canadian National Hockey League from 1924 to 1938. The M has several distinctive features that are present on our time traveller. The team was established for the English community in Montreal. They did enjoy some success, but by 1938, they were out of the National Hockey League and out of business. So instead of this top being way ahead of its time, it's actually nostalgic. They hadn't played for three years at the time of this photograph. Here's the Maroons and look at their tops. Other than the slightly lighter square background, they seem to be identical to our time traveller's top. An original top was even found on display at the International Hockey Hall of Fame. The sunglasses are rather a mystery. They do look way out of place in any 1941 photograph, but apparently wraparound sunglasses glasses with side panels were around from the 1920s. I say apparently because I have not been able to turn up any evidence for this. You may do better than me on this, but I have not seen a single example online. The general consensus seems to be that wraparound sunglasses became popular from the 1960s. The hairstyle and the appearance of what looks like a hoodie at the back completes the look. Unusual? Yes. Rare? Yes. Rocking a look 70 years ahead of his time? Yes. We could even say implausible? Yes but impossible? No. We don't know the identity of this man or what he achieved in life, but he will go down in history and always be remembered as the 1941 time-travelling hipster. This is the 1898 Klondike Gold Rush in Canada. And here's a worker mining for gold. But that's clearly Greta Thunberg. So we need to ask the question, is Greta Thunberg a time traveller? It would make a lot of sense. She's lived in the future. She will have seen the devastation of climate change. So it would be hardly surprising that she keeps popping up at different space-time coordinates to warn the world of our impending doom. We have a Greta Thunberg now in 2023, masquerading as a 20-year-old Swedish climate activist. This girl looks identical to Greta Thunberg, and she certainly sports her trademark personality and intense stare. It's such an uncanny resemblance that AI facial recognition software picked out this photo from an online collection by the University of Washington in Seattle. Has Greta made a big mistake here wearing her hair in trademark Swedish pigtails, despite being in a Canadian gold mine close to the turn of the 19th century? This photograph cannot be debunked, and I'm officially marking it unsolved. <laughs> painting is called The Expected One from 1860 by Ferdinand George Waldmuller. He's captured on canvas a heartwarming scene where a boy is hoping to woo an oncoming pretty girl. The boy is hoping that the flower he picked for her will win her heart. But she seems to be more concerned about texting on her phone. Has the artist inadvertently captured a time traveller or is that a bible in her hands? I think it's probably a bible. Next. 
At first glance, this is seemingly an ordinary wartime photograph taken at Reykjavik, Iceland, in 1942. But on closer inspection, this man does look like he's chatting away on a mobile phone. And he seems to be the only person in the photograph who has spotted the cameraman. He's even adopting the familiar gait of someone on a mobile phone. If he is on the phone, who's he talking to? There were no cell towers or satellites in 1942. Could he possibly be in touch with somebody out of time at differing space-time coordinates? More logical explanations for this photograph suggest he's holding his watch to his ear and checking that there's a tick. Or maybe he's scratching the back of his ear with a pipe. Can this photo be debunked fully though? No, I'm marking it as suspicious. But the watch hypothesis is, I grant you, more logical. This painting is called Mr. Pinchon and the Settling of Springfield. It was painted by Umberto Romano in 1937 and depicts events of the 17th century and the founding of Springfield in Massachusetts. But that's unmistakably an iPhone in his hand. You can even discern controls on the side of the device. He's even waving off this guy in a, I'm sorry, but I've got to take this motion. That wave didn't come into common usage for another 400 years. Umberto Romano died in 1982, 25 years before the iPhone and he painted this 70 years before the iPhone. Some have suggested that he may be holding a mirror, something common to European settlers, but completely foreign to Native Americans. It's hard to tell. I'm marking this one as probably not an iPhone. This photograph was taken in 1917 at San Joseph Bay, Canada. It's recently been doing the rounds on social media as proof of time travel. It looks like a lovely summer's day and everyone is dressed up and they're all happily posing for a photograph on this rocky outcrop. No one looks out of place, except this guy. He's not the only one wearing shorts, but with his t-shirt and surfer dude hairstyle, along with his shorts, he does look out of place and he looks out of time. And unlike our 1941 hipster photo, it looks like this time traveller has been rumbled. Has this guy spotted that something's amiss here? I'm going to mark this one unsolved. This piece is called The Grave Nascos of an Enthroned Woman with an Attendant. It's a work of art from 100 BC, over 2,100 years ago. But that's clearly a laptop. I can almost hear a mother saying, that's nice dear, but I'm switching off the Wi-Fi at seven. We've even got USB ports in this example. I'm marking this as unlikely to be a laptop. Please allow me just 15 seconds to plug this channel. Very Nearly Interesting is a brand new channel and I need all the help I can get. Please hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. That's how YouTube knows you like it and they'll show it to more people. And please consider subscribing. That way we might see you again. Are any of these conclusive proof of time travel? No, but it's not impossible. If none of these examples are of actual time travellers, that brings me to a previous point. Where are the time travellers? If the scientific world is convinced of time travel, then where are they? This is an interesting time to be alive. Surely they'd visit once in a while. If we're gonna say that there's no time travellers, then that's bad news for the human civilization because it could mean that we get wiped out before the inevitable technology becomes available. Me, if I could time travel, I wouldn't turn up at the opening of a crummy bridge or pose for a photograph on a rocky outcrop. I'd witness the first flight by the Wright brothers and marvel at the very first time that humans left the earth by controlled and powered heavier than air flight. I'd turn up at John Logie Baird's first ever demonstration of his newfangled invention, the television. What an honour that would be. I'd watch the world's first movie being shot at Round A in Leeds. I'd probably try to get a starring role and throw caution to the wind with the trouble that I'd cause in the future. <laughs> that none of these events have time travellers in them makes me think that for backward time travel at least, it's not possible. Well, one thing's for certain, it won't be invented in this next 30 years, because if it was, that's about how long I've got left. So I would definitely use it to come back and visit myself and bring the odd treat. That young man is for you. Well, thank you very much. Present. Is that for me? No problem. Thank you. How did you know beer is my favourite thing in the world? Well, thank you very much. Let me have a little. That's my.
my favourite. How did you know? And what's this? Next week's lottery numbers. You know, for a second there, I thought you might have been my future self and you've come to visit me. But you can't be, because if you were my future self, you'd know I don't even do the lottery. <sighs> By the way, that's a ridiculous microphone. If you've enjoyed this video, excuse me, excuse me a second. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. That way, more people will see it. And please consider subscribing. That way, we might see you again. And please have a look at some of the other content on the channel. There's lots of interesting things on there. Well, very nearly interesting. Thank you.